Hello, I'm Robbie. This is my narrowboat home that I've been travelling on for the last three years around the UK. And I think I might have discovered one of the most beautiful canals in the whole of the system. So the Chesterfield Canal, it used to connect right up into Chesterfield, I think. So, I mean, there's only a few hundred yards up this way and you reach a dead end, which looks like this. So what I've had to do is come to the end here, moor up and then turn round in this winding hole, uh, which is where you use the wind to turn your boat round. I did film a lovely little time lapse just now, but I've just lost the whole clip due to the fact that there's like a white out on the lens, the bleached white. You don't need to know all this stuff. It's my problem, not yours. Let's get cranking. Before we carry on moving the boat, uh, I just want to mention that you can walk the rest of the way to Chesterfield. So if you don't have a boat, you can always crank it on foot, like Ian just there, who, who for charity walked like 48 hours straight, I think, well, stopping off at a pub along the way, uh, all the way through the night and walked all the way to the end of the canal at West Stockwith, and I met him on my first day there. Here's my, my bike, I've just got had it out on the towpath there, cycling along, although if you are a cyclist, I recommend a mountain bike for some of it, because it can get a bit muddy and uneven. One of my favourite things to do is if I see a Yale lock, uh, I always try out my B, BW, British Waterways key, and see what's inside. Yeah, it doesn't fit. <laughs> Not far from here, um, they actually had a quarry where the stone was taken to build the Houses of Parliament when it was rebuilt in about 1840, I think it was. Um, and I think it was chosen, because we're, we're quite far away. <laughs> we're about 180 miles away, I think. And they chose this stone here because it was the most durable and uh, would withstand all the intricate work the stonemasons would, would be doing. And it would also put up with the, a lot of the pollution in London. I don't know how they work these things out, but that's why the stone was, was picked. The first thing you might notice is how narrow it is here. So yeah, you don't want to meet another boat coming the other way, um, which I have done at, uh, at well, only actually only once getting to the end. Now, apologies for the state of my boat. You can probably see that I've been trying to at least patch up some of the rust with a bit of red oxide. That's about as much as I can do. I'm just so limited on time at the moment. And also with the dandelion seeds and catkins, so many, so many things flying around that it just makes it really hard to paint anything. But my goal now is to save up enough money to pay someone to do it properly. Um, but yeah. How long that will take to save up, I don't know.
Right, we've actually not got that far. Um, I've just found another 48 hour moorings a few hundred yards down from where I was just this morning. Uh, it's nine o'clock, I've got to start work, and then later on I've got to go to the, see my boss and go to the Chelsea Flower Show. All these crazy things happening at the same time, so um, yeah, gotta go. At the end of the canal, next to a not pub of the week, is Kiverton Park train station. And from here, you can take a train to Lincoln that way, or go the opposite direction, which I did, to get Sheffield to change down to Northamptonshire and then on to London. Welcome to Chelsea. Yeah, enough of that. You didn't come here to watch Gardener's World. You come here to watch Crank It World. Is that a thing? Anyway, here is my favourite so far. My favourite scene from the Chesterfield Canal. Please enjoy. I'm just going to leave you with it. Here we go. I was on the Chesterfield Canal a couple of months and I actually started in sort of end of spring. So there was still some of these ramsons around, the wild garlic, um, which is one of my favourite wild plants, which I've never really seen so close to the water. Uh, and at this section of the canal, there was just so many of them. There was a real waft of uh, garlic coming off the side. I loved this part of the canal because you were enclosed by forests on most sides, but there's also gaps in the hedge. You could see through these, these wonderful views. Um, but you just hear all the bird song and uh, feel like you're, yeah, really are in the, right in the middle of the woods. Here's a lovely little mooring here. It's great. You, can, you just pull in and you've got great views. Uh, watch the sun go down and all that. And um, yeah, so that ends that little stretch of canal. All right, now we're going to go down some locks. Quite a lot of locks. There's about 23 between this mooring here and the marina, which is the next mooring. So here we go, guys. <laughs> there's a couple of treble locks on this bit here. So there's one treble three single ones and then another treble and it's quite amazing so what i've got to do is i've got to this is all to save water basically that's why they're designed like this i've got to fill up this one here and then for the next one as i go through into that one the water from this lock will go on to the next one as i'm going through it and then i'll just carry the water through the empty locks basically I'll try and show you what I mean. Yeah, one thing I have to remember to do is keep my fenders up because it really is too narrow. Don't want them getting caught. 
Right, so I've made sure these are all closed. That's just to protect um, the water levels, really. So if someone came along, they could easily, well, they could just uh, move that and then you'd lose a lot of water. So they've got these to, um, a special little key here that you use to um, unlock it. And um, this is the only one, so put that away now. Right, so I got a little bit stuck there and had to uh, actually go back to the second chamber and let some more water through so that both chambers were filling up, uh, lifting the level of the boat and so it didn't ground out anymore. So all we've got to do is let the water out of these gates now and we're through. That's the first triple lock done. Whew. Oh. Just missed that. Uh, this bridge is so... I'm just coming out of this, this last lock. The bridge is so low that I was about to completely wreck my bike. But thankfully I stuck it into reverse quick enough and managed to get out of the way. <laughs> managed to move the bike back. Flipping out. Now there's nothing I enjoy less than a good walk, um, but I do, I do enjoy exploring the area around me. So um, it was really nice treat to see some of these woodland areas. I mean, look at that, look at all that wild garlic there. And um, that's a good chance to take my mum's dog, Meg, for a walk. Because my, my parents come up to see me and help me get to the end of the canal. Um, I didn't tell them how many locks there would be. <laughs> About 20 odd locks that we had to go through. But they, they were amazing and uh, yeah, if you're watching, thanks guys. Anyway, returning to our journey back down the locks. Uh, here we are at Limehouse Lock, which is where they had a house that made lime. Uh, lime mortar, the stuff that goes in between the bricks in the chamber walls, the lock chamber walls. Another treble coming up. Right, so luckily the boat that's just come through has left a fairly full pound. It has leaked a little bit, so I'm going to add some more water. Like that. And check to see if the other locks are empty. Yeah, so unfortunately for us, all of the locks were full. Ah, so I've got to empty them all, uh, except for the last, the one at the top. And unfortunately, I can't just walk across these gates because there's no footboard, so there's no step, so we'll go the long way around. Actually, on this, on this meadow lock, I've gone too far. Uh, there's a marker down there, I don't know if you can see it, and it tells you to keep it at that level in the middle one. Um, otherwise you run out of water and you ground out again, so you have to sort of fill in some more water to make sure it's okay. Oh, that's not easy. <laughs> right, finally all the locks are set, so now we can go through.
So if you still don't understand how these things work, this is the top block going down there. And the water level is just about equalizing now with the next one, so I can open these. This is the middle lock, it's just about full. And now we're in the last lock and that's it. You just go out then. Is that, have I explained it well? I haven't, have I? <laughs> it's too hot. Can't expect to be educational when it's this hot. And when it is that hot, you just want to reach for a nice ice cold beer. And in this case, a summer ale from my favorite brewery, Dea, based in Cheltenham in Gloucestershire. Um, my brother, my mum and my dad, um, they passed by and because it's my birthday, they got me a selection of the beers and this is the, the, the seasonal one that I really, really, really liked. Could this be beer of the year 2018? For me, I'm not quite sure, but it was exactly what I needed. Unfiltered, unpasteurized and mm -mm -mm, the mouthfeel, I don't I know what I'm talking about. It was just really, really nice. Another staircase lock, this one just a double, but I've gone and got stuck again. Um, it wasn't my fault this time, all right? But yeah, we're stuck, so this is fun. What we're gonna do now is flush the boat out. Right, so here goes. Right, that worked. I better stop the water now. <laughs> it's worked too well. No, that's, actually, that's perfect. I've had a quick change of mind. I'm not gonna carry on to Shire Oaks Marina. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that tomorrow as my morning commute. Um, Cause right now I think I've got, I've got plenty to do. I've got to get some video editing done. And I've got to clean up the boat inside and outside. I've got to clear off all this on top of the roof. And that's from a, a lime tree that's just shed all its seed on top of my roof and made it really, really sticky. Nice. And that's it from the Chesterfield Canal for this episode, but there's lots more to come. So stay tuned and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.